for those whose heart to be open, something divine will begin to flow out of them. See, you know the way God shows his excellency is in doing it through the people who think they are not qualified. Or those who are even against it. Somebody may be watching me here and say, oh, this Christianity is tough. I'm not giving to it. I'm not, uh, I, I love the way they worship, but I'm not part of it. Wait until the hand of God comes on you. The hand. When the hand of God comes on you, your will will bend. Saul was a murderer. When the hand of God came on him, he became an apostle. A point came, the Bible said, Paul and Barnabas. He said, they are men that hazarded their lives. They were willing to take risk for what they once fought. Something they stood against, an encounter broke him. And for all ages, the name of Paul is golden. For all eternity, he will be remembered as one of the brightest warriors of Christ. But he was once a murderer and a rebellious person. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you do. I know the power of God. It can, it can uproot the most hardened of us. It can turn the heart of anyone and energize it. There are some of you here, you are hearing and you say, I would have loved to, but I, I don't know why I can't. Nobody's doing it because he can. He said, I've continued to this day because the Lord has helped me. Everybody doing it is helped. You stand up in the night, you want to pray, you sleep. Wait until fire come on you. Even when you close your eyes, you'll be speaking in tongues. And it's not just about speaking in tongues. You will go to your office, a wisdom will overtake you. And you will start thinking the way men don't think. And that wisdom will exhort you. But the goal is not just to bring you to a place where you receive a fat salary. It's to bring you to a place where you can also participate in making policies. And you will now create policies that create a window for the move of God. Hello viewers. Welcome to Nakazu Watch TV. This message you're about to watch is a deep teaching by Apostle Michael Oropo. Please watch to the end and don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. God bless you. The first protocol for emitting the light of God is inspiration. You have to be inspired. And even God knows. Many times, when you see people doing mighty things for God, either in full-time ministry or ministry in the sectors or the stratas of human engagement, there was a point where they caught an inspiration. That inspiration is what renavigates you. Everybody will go his own way. He said, all we like sheep have gone our own ways. Every man will choose his own way because rebellion is ingrained in our souls on account of the fall. What causes a man to have that paradigm shift is an inspiration. When that inspiration hits you, it will reprogram you and you start going in the direction of God. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 24, Paul who was a murderer suddenly became, a, became an inspiration for the whole body of Christ. Paul said when they heard of him, he said they glorified God for his namesake. It will take an inspiration for you to have to turn a new leaf if that inspiration does not come you will be so tired so weak and appear so helpless in doing that which is right in fact you may weep and cry and state how you would have loved to but not able to until inspiration comes inspiration has within it the power to turn a man around and to go in the direction of god and many times God can use men to inspire you. Many times, God can use circumstances to inspire you. The whole idea is to get your attention. That there is something supernatural around you and that can happen through you. That you are not all you look like. There is something that can happen within you that can affect not just your family, but your world. That inspiration will have to come to you at one point or the other. That is where the journey of glory begins from. You find people too many times, their circumstances have made them stereotyped. They think only in a particular way. When you find a man who has been oppressed before, he cannot think liberty. If you read the story of the 12 spies in Genesis 13 and 14, you don't blame them. They were in Egypt all their lives. They saw pains. They saw oppression. 
they know the power of Pharaoh. And so you come up overnight, you tell these people that they are going to become great, that they will take over a nation. It was impossible for them. They didn't have sufficient inspiration for that. But there were two men among them that had a different spirit. They had a different inspiration. Why these ones were seeing themselves as grasshoppers before the giants? They were now seeing themselves as warriors and giant killers. It's an inspiration that changes your paradigm. It's an inspiration that changes your thinking process. And that change is what opens you up to glory. But you see, inspiration alone is not enough. Somebody told me, inspire an idiot, he will become an inspired idiot. <laughs> inspiration is good, but it's not enough. The moment inspiration hits you, and a new frequency begins to stream into you, the next thing to do is to add discipline. Because that inspiration brings energy to your soul. Most of you who came for this conference from last night or the night before, something probably has hit your soul. You've told yourself, as I go back now, I will start praying. I will begin a fast. You told yourself, I will start reading wide. I will become vast. I want to be knowledgeable. You told yourself, I will make money and money enough to be able to advance God's agenda. That's an inspiration. After you receive that inspiration, you will need discipline to back it up. Because wishful thinking changes nothing. The energy you draw from that inspiration, you have to utilize it and utilize it quickly. This is where many people get it wrong. Paul saw Jesus appear in his glory. In Acts chapter 9 verse 4 to 6, Jesus himself commissioned Paul. Paul was not commissioned by another man. It was Jesus that told him, rise up, go into the city. You will be told what to do. He didn't see Jesus in the flesh. He saw him in the glory. But that was not enough. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25 and verse 27, Paul told us the place of discipline. He said, him that striveth for the mastery is disciplined, is temperate in all things. And in verse 27, he said, I beat my body. I bring it under subjection so that I will not lead others to God and myself is a castaway. So a man can be well inspired but disqualified at the end because it will take discipline to get there. Many persons, they catch an inspiration. The first one week, they are all over the place, enthusiastic, talking big things. After one week, because they don't know the place of discipline, they allow that inspiration to die. The first layer of discipline is to separate yourself from anything that does not facilitate that inspiration. That's the first level of discipline. You separate yourself from anything that diffuses and douses the energy of that inspiration. You receive an inspiration to pray, then leave movies alone because the two don't go together. You receive an inspiration to become wealthy, then leave lasciviousness alone. You may have to reduce going for the match in Old Trafford because two of them don't work together. Once in a while, you can go there to watch, but you can't be a fan. Because a fan claps for the one who makes the impact. And if you want to be the one making the impact, then you have to do something. If you have an inspiration to be a footballer, then you can sleep in Old Trafford. Because that one energizes where you are going. But if your inspiration is to become the best doctor so that you can facilitate policy making process in the medical world, then you have to begin to look for the great scholars in the medical world. You must become disciplined only to do the things that support the energy of your inspiration. Many are inspired, but they don't have discipline. If there's no discipline, inspiration was in vain. This is the journey to glory. Many people see God using people and they say they are lucky. Who told you? Ask the person God is using. Let him tell you how many sleepless nights he's had. On Friday, I was in, Accra, in Ghana, in a, in a place called Pram Pram. It's like 30 minutes from Accra. I ministered from 12 to 3 p.m. I came up again 12 midnight and ministered till 2 a.m. When I finished, I left straight for the airport to catch a flight of 3.40 a.m. in the morning to get to Lagos. I sat down that morning. The flight was delayed. I eventually left around 4.30. I arrived Lagos. Before I came out, immigration and everything, it was 7 a.m. 
I had to sit again without sleeping to wait to catch Virgin Atlantic to be in London another six hours. And I landed London. I was picked from London. We drove for three hours to Manchester. And 30 minutes later, I was up preaching. The power of God is moving. You say, ah, these people are lucky. For more than 28 hours, I didn't sleep. It takes discipline. Somebody will look at you and say, ah, God is helping this young man. Ah. If that is the case, then God is a respecter of persons. But the Bible says it's not a respecter of persons. Everybody doing something mighty is paying a great price. From 2012 to 2017, I fasted every day. I didn't appear here. I was made through process. Five. That's five years of non-stop fasting. People who stay with me now know, even when I'm not fasting, I can't eat. The stomach has shut down. Because I need to be light to catch inspiration from the spirit. I need to be volatile. So that when the anointing comes upon me, I will ascend like a mist and enter the heavens to pick the heart of the Father. It will take discipline in the area of fasting, discipline in study, discipline in prayer to be able to do this. If God says you are a politician, then you need to understand that every politician that made impact, you must know everything about their lives. You must pattern your life according to their disciplines. That's why the stories of men are told. So that you know the prices that were paid. Because nothing happens. Nothing, nothing happens by chance. Everything happening is created. It's made to happen. Many people hide under the comfort of their parents. See, parents need to begin to think like eagles. There's a time when you need to kick that boy out of the house. Go out there and find your future. Because if you stay under my comfort, you are lost. A boy of 25 years is watching movies. And you say you are an inventor. This is why Christianity has become a myopic religious movement. It's not just prayer. It's about taking the systems of this world. And you need to know the area you are engrafted to. If you are a politician at this point, and you don't know everything about every prime minister in England, then don't think about the parliament. It takes discipline. When you have caught inspiration, you need discipline. Stop talking and not walking. People are talking, they are not walking. And that's why they talk to old age. And they want to use age to oppress people. <laughs> Honor the elderly, but don't... <laughs> are you following... You have to make your mark and I'm not saying be, dis be disrespectful because I know in the UK here it's possible to look at a man of 70 and say hello how you doing we say it's civilization <laughs> an elder is standing you sit down hey what's going on you are interacting <laughs> you shake an elder hey what's up man What's up, man? You need to come back to Africa for IT. <laughs> Let's show you some morals. Because if you get educated into arrogance, then you are actually made an illiterate. Morality is superior to brilliance. You come to church, it's the elders that clean the church. You came and sat down. Oh, it's clean, it's clean. It's a shame. It's a shame. If you are a young man and you operate like that, it's a shame. And you will not learn it until you become old. That's when you will realize your foolishness. Praise God. Can I still go ahead? Because the young people are beginning to frown at me. I won't stop. I won't change my confession. In case you didn't hear me, I said, if you operate like that, shame on you. That's what I said. If your mom is the one who washed the dishes, shame on you. You are not educated. You are an illiterate in a civilized country. Civility has made you backward. <laughs> Somebody give the Lord a shout! Now, 
when you begin to discipline yourself and pressing in the direction of your calling then something happens God will now enter this equation to help you God will now step into the equation to enable you Moses was determined to deliver Israel he went the way of his abilities he went the way of focus of discipline of principles he wanted to do everything humanly possible to deliver Israel if you continue with discipline and God does not help you there's a place you will break even God knows the crisis the challenges the terror of the devil something will come along the line and because God does not want you to break as you keep pressing then you enter into encounters you may start that prayer every day for one hour and you will do it for six months nothing happens you are struggling with sleep you are still praying God is watching because there's a law of consistency in the spirit he said Jesus did not commit himself to men for he knew all men every spirit we wait to see your desperation to see your consistency level to see if you are willing to bear the weight of the ordination you want to walk in and so God will let you to keep pressing in discipline in focus in principles you keep pressing a point comes then God appears and so the third protocol of the glory is the encounter and one thing that encounter will do for you is to awaken hunger in your spirit hunger is stronger than discipline if you were to eat food every day by discipline you will miss your meals many times because you can't by discipline eat food for 30 years but there's an alarm system within you that makes you to eat consistently at a particular time it's called hunger and so what God wants to do in order to keep you around the corridor of glory is to inject hunger into your spirit that's why the psalmist said in Psalm 63 from verse 1 to 2 he said my soul longed I'm not the one doing it this is not my making it, within me there are forces that draws me to you he said thou art my God early will I seek thee he said my soul tasted for thee my flesh longed after thee as in a dry and testy land where no water is something beyond the man has taken over him every man walking in the glory there is a force that took over him at some point that force is what makes that man unable to stop even when he wants to it eats him up from within it's a thirst that cannot be quenched it's a hunger encounters come to awaken hunger because there is a measure you need to journey to in order to come out with something the bible spoke concerning moses he said moses stepped into the deep darkness where god was so even when god hid himself moses was still seeking because he can't go back he said we are not of them that drop back onto perdition there's no future behind and so something must awaken on your inside to keep you going even when the going gets tough encounters come to make you forget encounters come to make you forget the former things so that you can press you can press until you keep seeing the glory and you see more of it there are many persons who have not sustained and cultured discipline until they came to encounter it took Moses 40 years to get to Horeb but he never changed his mind for 40 years the guy kept going there because Jethro told him that mountain is called the mountain of God you know Jethro is one of the sons of Keturah who was Abraham's concubine and so he was from a lineage that came from Abraham and Abraham taught his children the way of the Lord even Abraham's servants were not normal people he said Abraham took 318 trained servants. Abraham's servants are trained. And he said, Abraham divided himself among them. That's a mystery. So when they were going to war, there were not 319 people. There were 318 Abrahams. Because Abraham Abrahamized them. That's why 318 men defeated four kings. It's not possible. They didn't have chariots. They didn't have weapons. There were no records. But God had told Abraham before. He said, in this shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So Abraham is bigger than the nations. And so Abraham can be bold. If you can make them Abrahams, one of them can take the nations. That was what the man did. So the sons of Abraham and the servants of Abraham were all taught 
That's why Jethro was the one who came to teach Moses how to divide men into ranks. He said, this work will weary you. He said, raise captains of thousands, captains of hundred, captains of fifty, captains of ten. He knew the ways of God. So he told Moses, there is a spirit on that mountain. Elohim dwells there. It's called the mountain of God. And so many times when Moses is done grazing, he will go to the backside. Well, maybe God can appear today. Maybe God will appear today. A hunger was awoken in him and he kept going. He kept going until the day the oracle of God stood before him. And from that day, Moses became a city taker. From that day, Moses became an envoy of Zion. From that day, Moses became an ambassador of heaven. And so your discipline is designed to take you to the corridor of hunger. It is when you enter hunger that you become a servant of the glory. That's why you can behold the glory and not be tired. That's why you can stay there and not think about time. Did you not read about Moses? Moses was on top of the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. There was no food. There was no water. But he was too hungry to be satisfied by physical things. And when Moses descended from there, in Exodus 30, 29, he said, Moses wished not that his face shone. The man had become like a deity. From that day on, everywhere Moses spoke, his voice was like the thunder of God. He had entered something that was beyond the realms of mortals. Discipline is still at the mortal realm. But there is something in you that will only be activated when you cross the great divide. You have to see the God of heaven for yourself. John was speaking in 1 John chapter 1 verse 1. He said that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. It's not a story a pastor told me. It's not a story I read in a book. I started from there. I was inspired and then I started searching by discipline until a point came that God appeared to me. He said we handled of the word of life. When you have handled you have become an ambassador. When you have handled, you have become a witness. And so a man who wants to shine forth the glory of God sufficiently to take and to affect a human civilization must have seen God for himself. He must have touched God for himself. A dimension of God would have appeared through him. Listen, a title cannot make that happen for you. Your position in an institution cannot make that happen for you. You can call yourself a prophet you can call yourself a president. It doesn't mean you will reign. But when you touch him, even if you don't have a title, your generation will bow to you. When you touch him, even if you don't have a title, the territory will respond when you show up. When you touch him, even if you don't have a title, something must happen. I was told that they decided to honor that the Jew in Maryland in the U.S. because they notice consistently for more than 10 years that anytime he steps into the land the crime rate drops. It's not because police became efficient. It's not because there is surveillance. As he enters the land the demon that inspires people to do crime. The atmosphere over the territory shifts. See, crimes are product of dark atmospheres. I was discussing with my friends last night of the killings in London. Some years ago, it was even more intense. But certain men appeared there and they began to shift the cloud. And when the cloud shifts, men become reasonable. And so this is not church. The police discovered every time they say this man comes, in days, crime just shoots down. What is it about him? So they honored him and gave him a key over the city. Because we now discover that even though you came from Nigeria, you are a global gatekeeper. When you... <laughs> it's not about the preaching. It's about the entourage that came with him. And so he can enter the city and not preach. The territory knows he came. You don't need to preach for the city to know that you came. When you enter there with sufficient glory, the systems will respond. The, the demons will know that a being has come here. Because there are registers in the spirit. He said, Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? 
They know men there, but it's based on the glory they carry. Paul carried so much glory that there were many places he couldn't go. He sent handkerchief. And handkerchief was doing what Paul would have done if he was present. How did demons know the handkerchief? Because there was no announcement that it came from Paul. But the glory upon it is a signature. And so everywhere it went, demons were cast out. So, it's not about the theology of casting out demons. It's about the power to cast out devils. You don't need to argue and say the name of Jesus must be pronounced as Yeshua. Demons don't hear language. They don't understand Aramaic. They don't understand English. What they hear is power. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So if you know that your word will not respond to your speakings, except it is encoded with power, there will be hunger to seek the glory. There will be hunger. You can't just be another doctor. You can't just be another lawyer. You can't just be another businessman. The nation is looking for much more than doctors. The nation is looking for much more than lawyers. If they tell you how many doctors and lawyers have graduated from Oxford, alone, Oxford alone, you will know that England needs more than doctors. If they tell you how many merchants have done business in this land in millions of pounds, you will know that the nation requires more than a merchant. And so you will heighten your vision a bit more. Because your vision may just be to graduate. Even the first class graduates alone, if they give you their chronicles, you will know that the territory requires much more than that. Now, that's a very good inspiration. That's a very good motivation. Keep it. But over and above it, think beyond certificate. Because destiny is bigger than paper. There's something that must come upon you. Because Christ is in you. And he said, the reason Christ came into you is for a hope. He said, that hope is glory. That glory can emit through you. There's a glory that must come out of you. But for that glory to happen, you must journey from inspiration through discipline to hunger. A hunger that overwhelms you and you tell yourself, I will not stop until something supernatural comes on me. Thank God for my certificate. Thank God for my training. Thank God for my business. But I will not stop here. I will not stop here. That's what Paul caught. And he said, according as it is written, he said, they believe and have spoken. We having the same spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. Romans 15 verse 4, the Bible said, the things that were written aforetime. It said they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. And so you, you, are, you are angry and you tell yourself, Paul too was a lawyer. But there was something about Paul's life that made many generations after him not to forget him. You tell yourself, Daniel, Nehemiah, they were politicians. But there was something about them that was deeper than politics. They were able to restore the glory of God over nations. You tell yourself, Joseph too was a man in government. But there was something more about him. How could he preserve the heritage of God? Not only over Egypt, but the whole world came to Egypt because of Joseph. What did they carry? There was a glory on their lives. And you will tell yourself, I will not be one of the many doctors. I will not be one of the many lawyers. There has to be a glory on my life. If that kind of hunger is not awakened in your spirit, ah, then it means you've not had encounters. It means you've not had encounters. Encounters come to awaken you to the fullness of your reality. Refuse to be mundane. Thank God for the gymming. It's good for, for health. But the life is bigger than having a broad chest. Thank God for the foundation and mascara. Life is bigger than having a beautiful face. Spirits don't look at the size of your chest. They look at the weight of glory you carry. Spirits don't look at your physical beauty. They look at the authority with which you can command. And so when God created us, he created us to reign in the spirit. And it will take hunger to get there. When you begin to service that hunger, a point comes when you enter into participation. They will now allow you to begin to interact not just with God but with the beings that live there. It was John that was speaking. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a sound as of a trumpet and he said in Revelation 4 verse 1, he said, I heard that sound again and a door opened in heaven and I heard a voice said, come up hither. 
the moment he entered there, he began to interact with the elders. That was when he said, I saw 20 and 4 elders. You begin to talk with beings that are eternal. You begin to talk to beings that are immortal. You will press until you are given access to participate. The men who rule this world, if they tell you the truth, they see things. They hear things. And they attend meetings beyond the stars. Nobody speaks and a million people hear. Just because he understands English. They touch something in the spirit. Either in the demonic or in light. A prophet said he went to see that he had a boy. And they kept him outside beyond the normal time for over four hours. Somewhere in his heart he was wondering what happened today? Did I do something wrong? Am I being edged out? And when daddy allowed him to see him eventually, he said, sorry, I was in a meeting with Isaiah. I know you are a redeemed. You didn't hear it. I was in a meeting with Isaiah. And then you think a man can sit in one village called Redemption Camp and every continent of the world, there are systems bowing because of him. He said when they told him to head the redeemed Christian church, he stood in the Redemption Camp. And he told God, how can I do this? While he was talking to God, he said, light fell from heaven. Hit the ground and created an earthquake. He said, the impact of the tremor went as far as the boy did. You will now hear him preach and you are preaching slowly. It's beyond a slow tone. It's beyond a slow tone. It can inspire you. You can aspire to be like him. But there are beings you have seen. The hotel where they prayed for him to take over. The stories we heard was as they were praying in that hotel there was a tremor in the united states there was a tremor and the engineers came to survey the hotel they said which heavy equipment are you using here they said no we are not using any heavy equipment we are just praying with our tambourine the engineers had to search the whole room they didn't see anything but from that day they canceled that hotel because of the impact of the foundation it took over six years for him to come back and lay hands on the wall for the hotel to be reopened because a man is praying and the entourage that enters his prayer room are so heavy that foundations of building shake it takes much more than intelligence to be a ruler on earth you must be granted access you must be given allowance to participate when you start entering into the corridor of participation then scepters begin to rest on you he said, who shall stand upon the mountains of God? Who shall ascend his holy hills? Because every engagement we carry is with an attempt to ascend the holy hills of God. Because spirits manipulate this realm. And a man who will rule in this realm must have interaction with spirits. That's why he said, you have come to Mount Zion. The city of the living God. To an innumerable company of angels. To the spirit of just men made perfect. You must meet beings to rule this earth. Even Jesus in Matthew 17 when he was praying, the Bible said Moses and Elijah they stood with him on that mountain telling him what he must do. You can't go out if your friends are only men, you are weak. You can't have friends, brothers and they are all men. Men are too weak and ally. They can become great liabilities. In addition to the men God give you have partners in the spirit. That when you scream, Elijah will come. That when you scream, an angel will appear. That's why the business will not close down. You can build a bank for 30 years. When the bank is about to shine, the government comes and sees it. Unless you also have people on the other side who can touch the heart of the king, you will have a problem. And so the reason men will shine is because they press into God until they began to interact with beings in heaven. The Bible spoke about widows. It said widows received their dead back to life. They came somewhere that they had power over the dead. They came somewhere that they had authority over the dead. The problem we have is that we have forgotten how the fathers did it. The fathers were not naked. The fathers were not ordinary people. They pressed into God until they came somewhere. They were enthroned in the spirit. And when they talk, they talk from their thrones. Because we don't have thrones, that's why we compete with ourselves. When you find somebody doing it in a certain way, you too want to do it that way. It's not how it is done alone that makes it work. It's who is doing it with you.
there is a place that you have been invited to. There are beings waiting for you. There are realms you should access. Don't be trapped in this world. Don't be carried away by the skyscrapers in Manchester. There's a realm more beautiful than what you see here. There's a place more spectacular than what you see here. When God began to allow me access to the spirit, mundane things stopped moving me. The other time I flew to Dubai, I was in my hotel until I finished. I left straight to the airport. They said, come and do sightseeing. I said, I'm busy. If I, if I want to come for sightseeing, I'll bring my wife. I came for business. There's no time for sightseeing. Because when I enter my room, sometimes an angel of light just walks into you. And you see something you can never forget. You see something you can never become familiar with. If they come to you a thousand times, it will be like the first time. And anything they tell you. There was a time I was sick. I was afraid. My liver, my lungs, my kidney, every organ was about to fail. I was choking and gasping for air. While I laid on the bed talking to the Lord, a being sat on my bed. The glory he came with, all the hairs on my body stood. I was in shock. And he just said, because I live, you shall see tomorrow. The moment he said it, a being stood up and left me. From that day, I don't fall sick. I can keep the most strenuous routine. I can keep the most strenuous itinerary. Come back the next day, I rise up like a stone. Because a, a creature of eternity whispered to me, because I live, you shall see tomorrow. And so we are not afraid. Even in the storm, we are standing. Where men fear to go to, where angels fear to go to, we enter there and we enter with boldness. The first time I went to Pakistan, which is actually once anyway, they told me there was crisis because the prime minister was just removed. And the prime minister was going about creating all kinds of chaos in the nation. But that was when the door opened. I stood up and I entered there. They said, you can't do crusade now. I said, the best way to die is to die in mission. It means you are a gallant soldier. That's how you enter the crown of life. And we had five crusades with thousands of people saved. When we finished, we left. Nothing happened. Because he said, because I live, you shall live also. That business you are doing, you need to hear something. Sometimes as you are pressing, you are pressing, you are pressing. Then Joseph walks to you and tells you, this is how I took over Egypt. You will have a blueprint that is not found in Oxford. Sometimes you are in government. As you are pressing, you are pressing. Then Nehemiah will come to you and tell you what to do to take the heart of the king. They can seize everybody's property, not you. Because you have heard from a man who was able to get a king to rebuild Jerusalem. And so anything you do, you will have the allegiance of the king. Men will come to you and say, how are you doing it? Even you, if you are honest, you will know it's beyond you. There's an immortal economy around you. This is how men begin to shine. Shining is a mystical reality, but there's a protocol. And the protocol is interaction. Who have you seen? What have you heard? Who has spoken to you? United Kingdom is an ancient civilization. For you to touch the foundation, creatures of eternity must talk to you. They must visit you. They must interact with you. And this is not a prerogative of prophets. It's for everyone who is a child of God. He said, because you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels. See, there is something you will touch. You will have favor that you can't explain. Things are not working. Then Esther whispers to you and says, this is what you do to work favor. You can work favor that you can break protocols. You can work favor that kings can bow and lower their standard because of you. It is who you have touched. They come with graces. They come with dimensions. They could be spirit of judgment made perfect. They could be angelic functionaries. They could be visitations of the spirit of God or Christ himself. But by all means, make sure you have those encounters. We don't rule the world by chance. When you see a man doing something that the world pays attention to is beyond where he's living. There are many people who will leave Africa and come to the UK today. They will become princes. It's not about the location. It's about what you carry. It's about what you carry. If you don't carry anything, if you like, relocate to the palace. You will still be a nobody. But if, you, if God rubs that thing on you, if you start having those encounters, you don't need to be in the palace. Even the king can look for you. Because immortal beings have committed to you immortal realities. A conference like this is a summon. It's a summon. 
that you don't grow old and discover you made no impact but the door is open the slate is plain you can decide what is written on it you begin from inspiration you journey through discipline you come into hunger and you stay hungry until participation is permitted participation there is a wisdom that you need to have in order to alter the direction of a nation Daniel had that wisdom a point came the Bible said that the king sent for him and this was what they said about Daniel he had the ability to explain hard sentences he said the spirit of the holy gods dwell in him he said light dwells with this man and an excellent wisdom there is a dimension of the Daniel order if you have that kind of encounter that wisdom can walk through your life there is a wisdom Joseph had that made him become the savior of the economic structure of a nation if you have that Joseph's encounter that wisdom can come on you and you can become a force in the economic structure in this nation nobody is small men just reveal the dimension of their encounters if you have those encounters your stature can change the impact you have on the government on the nation can change it's not even about where you came from this is not i came from nigeria i came from uganda i came from rwanda i came from kenya that's not the factor the factor is what are the encounters you've had if you have the right encounter is it not somebody that came from pakistan who is your prime minister today what are the encounters you've had it's not about where you came from in the natural it's about where you have been in the spirit when you even consider his age you are humbled church is not religion it's a place of awakening the glory so that everyone can walk in that order and when you begin to participate then you are sent you are sent into the economy you are sent into the media you are sent into the academia and you come with resources resources of wisdom resources of power resources of creativity resources of excellence that's how we take over you don't go into the world to go to God. You go to God to go into the world. He say he's called some to be with him so that he might send them. If you have not been sent, it means you have not yet gone there. Because everyone who has participated have been sent somewhere. There are some apostles who teach from the altar, but there are other apostles who take over the economy. There are other apostles who take over the academia. And every one of us in the New Testament, we are to be sent into our world. Jesus said, go into all the worlds and disciple all nations. But you don't go without a witness. You don't go without an empowerment. That's why he said, tarry until you are endued with power. Tarry until you are endued with power. When you are endued, then you can take over your world. How beautiful it will be when suddenly the nation begins to be reshaped and you find somebody with black skin making the policy not because he is black skinned but because he has touched something that is superior to skin color how beautiful it will be when the nation is being reshaped and you see young lads old persons all walking out a protocol that brings the glory of God to the territory because they've met him he said that which was from the beginning which we have seen we heard we saw, we looked upon and we handled men are being invited to handle the glory and it's as we handle the glory that we can radiate the glory congratulations viewers thank you for watching to the end of this video I know this video has greatly blessed you and brought you into a deeper level of light and illumination as the bible speaking it says the entrance of the world give it light and understanding to the simple and one thing this video has done today is it has brought you into a deeper level of light. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Remember, the Bible says, do the work of an evangelist in season and out of season. And one way that you can do that work of an evangelist is by sharing this video to everybody around you, your friends, your ability, your well wishes, even your perceived enemy, because I know you don't have an enemy. Thank you and God bless you.